Welcome to a brand new episode of Fairy Dust TV. I'm your host, Jen Burton, Romantic Fairy Godmama for smart, successful single women around the world. Today's topic, how to get him back. What I did that will help you in your love life. Now, before we get started specifically on this topic and the five things that you need to do that will help you get him back, I want to go full disclosure with you. Fairy Dust TV, whether it's filmed live or pre-recorded, is not scripted. And I um, am going to be very transparent with you today. And I do this non-scripted version so that you know that I'm being authentic with you, that I'm being genuine with you, and that you can feel what it's like if you and I were working together and I was helping you out in your love life. Now, the other piece of this that I want you to understand is that I don't claim to have all of the answers to your love life, to my love life, or to anybody's love life. And anybody who does is full of crap because the nature of love is that it ebbs and flows. You have highs and you have lows. And you, have, you will fall and skin your knees sometimes. Sometimes you'll fall flat on your face, but it doesn't make it less magical because we need to know those lows to really experience the highs. And they work beautifully together and to um, help you experience the full threshold of love, okay? Now with that said, the topic I'm talking about today is something that I've only talked about um, in a program that I created, which is called Make Him Want You Again. The topic is the um, breakup that my husband and I experienced last year that lasted an entire month. Now, this still is not super easy for me to talk about, and I'm going to trip over my words a bit. Um, I hope you'll be patient with me because I have some really gorgeous gems in this for you if you if you have that patience with me so the short short uh, the short version of the story is is that last year my husband and I had um, had some friction going on in our relationship but it wasn't it wasn't completely fully articulated it wasn't like we were having the massive fighting or anything like that but there was just friction I was I was having these feelings that I couldn't explain I think he was having them as well and it just kept building up building up till finally one day he tells me that he doesn't know if he wants to be with me anymore now um, now during these times of friction beforehand you know of course these are these are things that I was thinking as well but something happens, of course, when it comes out of his mouth. And at that point in time, you know, we're, of course, we're married, we're living together, and he decides to start looking for somewhere else to live. And we are no longer interacting as if we are a couple. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that I was completely devastated. I, um, but I also knew not only because of what I do, I knew there were steps I had to take. I also knew that when one person who, um, when you're living together and one person has checked out of the relationship and you're still living together, there's an added component of difficulty to reconciling that relationship. But I want to talk about the five things I did, um, five things that, that the five things that I did that will help you um, get a man back to if something similar has happened in your life. Okay. So the first thing I did, even though this was, you know, a very hard and difficult time for me, is that I didn't make this about his why. Now, yes, I did think about and I talked to some girlfriends about what he might be going through, but it wasn't all about that, okay? I decided what it might be for him. I left it there. But what I really did was take the opportunity to understand that what we were going through at the time, regardless of how it worked out, was to understand that that was an, an opportunity for me, okay? And one of the things that I realized is that this, the first thing that I realized this was a perfect opportunity for me to solidify and understand that I really did want to be with him. So all that friction that I had talked about earlier that had building up and when I was having some doubts of whether or not I wanted our relationship to work out, that I knew when this happened over the next, um, few weeks during the first few weeks is that yes, I really did want to be with him. So it gave me the opportunity to know and stand in that fact um, and own that I did want to be with him and stop having those wishy washy um, emotions surrounding, oh, do, do I really just not want to be in a relationship? All of that. that it, it gave me that opportunity. And funny enough, <laughs> when 
funny enough, that happens when um, when somebody is telling you they, they don't want to be with you anymore. It gives you that opportunity to recognize whether or not um, that's where you want to be. So that's what I want you to do first, is I want to encourage you to look at why this is happening for you, okay? So it's really easy to think that this is happening against you or to you, but it's really happening for you regardless. So let's say another piece of this is one of the things that I really let sink into my body. It wasn't easy at all, at all times, but it's something I did, is that I knew Okay, I knew I got to decide that I really did want to be in the relationship. And the second piece of this is that I knew this was happening for me, which meant this was either going to be an opportunity for our relationship to get better when we came back together, or if we did separate for me to find a better, an even better relationship than I already had. Okay, so if you're going through that with a man and he isn't either, he's either you guys have either broken up or maybe this is a guy who's not... Um, maybe you were dating and then all of a sudden he turns and um, you, st you stop hearing from him. I want you to know and I want you to stop worrying so much about why he's doing what he's doing and understand that this is an opportunity for you. So what's that opportunity? One of the things that you can do is you can make a list. Why could this be happening for me? It's a very simple concept and you just write down, well, maybe I need to... Um, look at my other options in men. Maybe I need to start strengthening my boundaries with men. Maybe this has given me the opportunity to, uh, I've been wanting to move to Europe forever and explore that, but I decided that I was going to stay here because I was too scared of this. Maybe that's an opportunity. There's, there is an opportunity in this situation and I need you to look at it, no matter how devastated you feel right now. I need you to look at it and start to let that to sink in your body because it's there. It's underneath, if, if you're freaking out about it, it's underneath all that grief. But take a deep breath, calm down, and explore what that opportunity is. Now, the second thing I need you to do is understand that we as women are wired to be desired. So it's extraordinarily easy for us to freak the fuck out when the man that we care about, regardless if we've been having some friction with them or not, stops reciprocate or stops giving you the attention that you normally get from him. So for instance, when my husband stopped sending me the great texts that he always sent me and I wouldn't bear, I would barely hear from him while he was at work, we didn't communicate too much when he got home, I automatically went into freak out mode. And that is so normal because we're wired as women to be desired by that guy that we that we want to be with or or accustomed to being with and i want you to understand that it's your job to not freak out so yes you can have your emotions but it's not okay for you to unleash those emotions all over him or all over the world for that matter don't flip out don't start stalking him don't start you know going through just take a deep breath and understand if you can rein that freak out in, I can help you either decide to move on or get him back. But I can't do it when you're freaking the fuck out, okay? Some of the ways that you can do this is by keeping your routines that you that you normally keep, so it, it or even starting some. So maybe you need to, if, if you work out normally, keep your workout. You can minimize your workout, okay? You can make it simple or, but whatever you do, whatever you decide to do, whether it be a workout, do it to the best of your ability. Don't half-ass it. So if you need to minim minimize it again, let's say normally you work out for an hour. This time you're just gonna work out for 20 minutes because you're still freaking out, but you're gonna give it all you've got for those 20 minutes, okay? So whatever you do, whatever you decide, you're not going to half-ass it. And the other thing you can also try to is to start volunteering during this time because there's something really powerful about focusing your attention on other people to help deal with this specific type of freak out. Number three, I want you to make arrangements for times that you know are going to be difficult. So let me give you an example. Um, my husband, my husband and I, during this, during this breakout, we had previously scheduled a trip to see his family with our child. Now, of course he decided to go ahead and take, and take our child to go see his family, but I wasn't going to be going because we were split up at the time. I knew this was going to be a really hard time for me. So 
I arranged things to do with my girlfriends, including I spent a weekend with a girlfriend who I didn't even tell her what was going on because I didn't want to focus the whole weekend on that. So I could I can use and I could divert my attention and direct that in that freak out energy that I was just talking about in other ways. And this was actually very good. It was like working a muscle of not having to freak out because um, I didn't want to have to freak out all over everybody. So again, we're not talking about not feeling your feelings. I certainly felt my feelings. I certainly let myself cry. I certainly let myself have moments of freak out, but I didn't let the freak out dominate my entire life. And I took care of myself by making arrangements during times I knew I was going to be super triggered and difficult. Okay. Number four, first, this is actually two combined together. Don't beg him to get back together. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes begging does work but you don't want to restart your relationship on a begging note because all it's going to do is send you straight into your insecurity okay um just like focusing on his why he's doing everything everything is going to send you into your insecurity you're going to if you're begging him to get back together and just pleading and crying It might work, you might get back together with him, but I can guarantee you that you're gonna have um, a relationship that's been started again on a foundation of your insecurities. And that's a relationship that has a very difficult time um, getting back to those highs. It's gonna be plagued with this insecurity and there's gonna be a good chance that that cycle is gonna happen again and again and again, okay? So no begging, you are not allowed to beg him to get back together, okay? The next thing is don't overload your friends with with this. So if you're in the middle of a breakout or if you're freaking out, okay, I've, um, I've been in this in different points in my life, so it's not like this is the only time this has ever happened, um, not, with, not with my husband specifically, but I do know what it feels like to be going through a breakup or to like somebody intensely and then all of a sudden they pull their attention away from you and you'd be freaking out about that too. But what's really important is that you're not, you're not overdoing it with your girlfriends or your guy friends about and constantly talking about this. You need to let them up for air. I understand that these this emotion is overwhelming, but it is up to you to manage your freak out and it's not their job. So yes, I want you to lean into your friends, but don't drown them in what's going on with you. Don't talk about it constantly. Talk about other things as well and have some fun with them, okay? And the fifth thing I want you to do is to not let your health or your career suffer. So going back to, we were talking about working out or helping out, you can do the bare minimum, but do the bare minimum well. So again, exercise, you need to get some kind of walking, some kind of movement in every day. And also your job should not suffer. So no, I'm not asking you to perform at peak, um, at your peak performance uh, right now, but you are not allowed to let everything go because I'm gonna tell you what happens. Once you get to a point, whether you guys get back together or whether you know you start to move on, there's gonna be a tremendous amount of guilt for all the things you let go during this time. Now again, you're not gonna be able to manage it all. So get that out of your head. You're not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna be able to do it, but I want you to take, make it the bare minimum. I want you to think about what absolutely has to be done and do that piece well to, and that's gonna help you to not feel guilty and to um, help refocus that desperate energy that happens during times like this. Now, again, those are the um, four, four things that I want you to focus on right now. I also have created a breakup how to get him back cheat sheet for you that has seven, seven, not 10, seven essential action steps that will help you soothe your anxiety and frustration about what's happening with him help you decide if he's truly worth your time and energy um also help you help you know whether whether or not you actually have a chance at getting back together with him and the last one is to find out what you need to do if you want to get him back so lover girl thank you so much for joining me for today's fairy dust tv um i appreciate you bearing with me because this was a very vulnerable um emotional thing for for me to talk about and to share with you um i want you to underneath this video grab that cheat sheet you just put in your name and email and i will shoot that over to you otherwise i will see you next week in a brand new episode of fairy dust tv and sending you lots of love you can do this lover girl